Hey everyone, welcome back to this tutorial series on the basics of Unity. For this lesson, we want to talk about the camera game object, so let's get to it. So here we have our tutorial project open inside of Unity, and the first thing that I want to do is stress the importance of the camera game object. The camera game object inside of Unity is super important because the camera game object is how you capture your gaming environment and display it to the player. Every time you create a new scene inside of Unity, it will come with a default main camera game object. And here in the hierarchy, we can see that game object right here. And when we select it in the hierarchy, we can see that it is displayed within the scene view. And I can focus in on it. Now without this camera game object, if I were to delete it from our scene, you'll notice that it says display one, no camera rendering. This simply means that there is no camera assigned to our display one output. And without any camera rendering, the player will not be able to see anything happening within the game. And so it's super important that we have a camera within our scene at all times. But now I want to re-add a camera to our scene. So to create a new camera, we can go to the Create drop-down menu, and then go down to the bottom where it says Camera. This will create a new camera for our scene, and I can rename this camera back to Main Camera. Now when you're thinking about your favorite video games, whether that be Halo, Call of Duty, League of Legends, World of Warcraft, the fact that you're able to even see the characters or the environment of your video game is all because of camera game objects. Now your favorite video game might have a first person perspective where the camera is actually in the head of the main character and you can control the camera to look around. It might have a third person perspective where the camera is kind of over the shoulder or behind the main character. It could even have an aerial perspective where the camera is up in the air looking down at the land and whole army of characters. No matter what the perspective is of your favorite video game, it's all using a camera game object. Now when we look at the main camera in the inspector, you'll notice the only difference between a camera game object and an empty game object is three additional components. Now a camera game object has a transform just like all the other game objects, but it also has a camera component a flare layer component, and an audio listener component. Now we already talked a little bit about the audio listener component in the last video when we talked about the audio source game objects, but I want to recap a little bit about the audio listener component. The audio listener is what ultimately outputs audio and sound effects from your video game to the player. Now the way it works is you have the audio listener component, and you also have audio source game objects, which play sound effects within your game. And if the audio source game objects play a sound effect within a certain range of the audio listener, then the audio listener will capture that audio and manipulate it for distance, and then it will output that audio to the player. Now the next component is the flare layer component, and this component simply just allows lens flares to be rendered in the output image of your camera. So if you want your camera to have lens flares, then you also need to have a flare layer component attached to it. Now we come to the main component that distinguishes a camera game object from the rest, and that is the camera component. Now the camera component is the component that does all the capturing of everything visual within your game. And once it captures everything visual within your game, then it renders it to the screen of the device that the game is being played on. Now this component has a number of different settings as we can see here, and all of them can be manipulated to change the way that the camera captures and renders the game. Now I'm not going to cover all of the settings in this video, but we will cover them in depth when we create a video specifically on the camera component. But the first setting that I do want to mention is the clear flags option, which is a drop down menu where you can select skybox, solid color, depth only, and don't clear. Now the two options that I use the most are skybox and solid color. Skybox is what it's currently set to, and it makes it so that your camera renders a 360 degree image of what looks like the sky. And so you can see this gray and then white to blue gradient in my game view and within my scene view. This is the default skybox that Unity creates. Now if I change the clear flag settings to solid color, you'll notice how there's still a skybox within my scene view, but my camera is not rendering it. Instead, it's just rendering a solid color. Once you select a solid color option, you'll notice that now our game view is blue, which is the same color as our background color. And so we can change the background color by selecting this option here and then just picking any color 
that we want our background to be. So if you're making a really old school game like Snake or Pong, then you could just set the background color to be black and then you don't even have to worry about it. The next option that I want to talk about is projection. There's two options. One is perspective and the other is orthographic. Perspective is used for three-dimensional games, whereas orthographic is used for 2D games. And to show you the difference, I'm going to create a 3D game object and I'll just create a cube within our scene and I'll drag it out and then I'll rotate it. Now with our camera set to perspective, you'll notice that our cube looks like a three-dimensional cube. And you'll also notice that the projection of our camera within the scene view looks as though it starts at the point of our camera and then goes out in a pyramid shape. Now I also want to grab our cube game object and move it around within our scene so that you can see how it still looks like a three-dimensional cube because the perspective of our cube changes as we move it. Now as I select our main camera and change our projection to orthographic, you'll notice how the projection lines of our camera are now in the shape of a rectangle. So there's a square that starts at the beginning of our camera and then it projects out from that square. You also notice how our game view has changed. The cube looks like it's a lot smaller. And now as I move our cube, you'll notice that it always stays in the same shape as if it were in the center of our screen. And that's because there's no perspective to our camera. And so everything looks a lot more flat. The next setting that we want to talk about is size, which changes the size of the projection window. So if we increase the size of our projection window, then you'll notice that everything seems to get a little bit smaller within our game view. That's because our projection window is capturing more. And so because it's capturing more, things that looked bigger become smaller. And the opposite happens if I make the projection size smaller. So if I make it smaller, you'll notice that less is being captured and so everything looks bigger. The next settings that we want to talk about are the clipping planes. Now there's two options. One is for the near clipping plane and one is for the far clipping plane. The far clipping plane is for how far you want your camera to capture things within your game. And so if I decrease the size of our far clipping plane, and if I decrease it so much, eventually we won't be able to capture the cube out in front of our camera because there's a limit to how far our camera views. And if I wanted to, I could only capture maybe half of our cube like that. That's because only a small portion of our cube is within the far clipping plane of our projection window. And if I wanted to, I could do the exact opposite with the near clipping plane. So if I increase the size of our far clipping plane, and then I increase the size of our near clipping plane, then you'll notice how it changes where our camera starts recording our environment. So if I wanted to capture only half of our cube, I could take it to right there, and you'll notice that now it's not capturing the first half of our cube, only the last half. Now the last setting that we want to talk about is the viewport rec. And to demonstrate this setting, I want to create a new camera. So I'm going to go create, then camera. You'll notice how this new camera overlaps our previous camera. Now the viewport rec changes the dimensions and the position of the camera as it's being rendered to the display. And probably the most common use for the viewport rec is creating split screen video games. And so if I were to decrease the size of our viewport rec in the vertical direction to something like 50%, and then I were to reposition it to the top of our screen, right about there, you'll notice that we now have a split screen video game where one camera is rendering the top half of the screen and another camera is rendering the bottom half of our screen. Now that's everything that we wanted to cover in this video about camera game objects inside of Unity. I hope you now have a better understanding of what they are and how they're used. If you have any questions, make sure that you leave them in the comments below. Also make sure that you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.